How to Survive a Moose Attack. Oh wait, wrong title. How to make peace with your god because that's the best you can do if this tank with antlers wants to take your life. The obvious answer is to just not be around one. Stay out of Alaska and can't- wait, was that? Oh, so he's our problem too. Alright then. What you need to understand is that moose aren't afraid of anything. To be fair, when you can walk on water like Moose Christ and cripple cars, there's not gonna be a lot of things that put fear in your heart. But if a moose makes a decision to subtract you from the human population, here's what to do. Back off and run. Find a tree or a building to hide behind and pray that Moosiah spares you. Curl into a ball. If a moose knocks you to the ground, you wanna protect your head and organs. Yes, while the moose might stomp you out with the force of 50 ray rices, curling into a ball might save your life. Do not get up right away. If you get up after an attack while the moose is still around, he'll have no problem issuing a round two assault on your soul. So if you see a baby moose, you need to exit the premises immediately. Baby moose is one of the most dangerous things in nature. Why? But seeing that means the next thing you might see is an 800 pound pissed off mother. The next thing you'll see is a white light. Seriously, that's how these things happen. I really hope you never need any of what I said in this video, but if you do and it doesn't work out, tell Pop Smoke his album slaps. I made a video on how to survive a moose attack, and after posting it, I realized one thing. Once a moose decides to choose violence, only two things can save you. Jesus Christ and the Moosiah himself. The best thing to do is not get attacked in the first place, so here are some signs that a moose is about to end you. If a moose stops eating and stares at you. Whatever you did to get his attention, stop it, because interrupting a moose's meal is punishable by the death penalty. If a moose lays back its ears or raises the hair on its hump, it means it has homicide on its mind, and you need to act accordingly. If a moose smacks or licks its lips or clicks its teeth, that means it's about to remove you from the United States Census. If a moose lowers its head and approaches you, you need to stop whatever you did to get this walking tank's attention before you get put six feet under. It pees. I don't know why, but if a moose urinates and makes eye contact with you, you're about five seconds away from getting rocked. If a moose shows you the whites of his eyes, you need to take the hint before he shows you the whites of the heaven gates. Lastly, if a moose whips his head back like a horse, it means if you get any closer, it will be your series finale. If you don't take the hint, you better hope Moosiah has mercy on your soul, else he'll split you in half like mooses to the Red Sea. To survive a gorilla attack. First of all, why would you ever put yourself in a position where you need to know any of this? Like seriously, in what scenario would you ever possibly- Oh. First of all, gorillas are 300 pound pacifist vegetarians that try to avoid conflict whenever they can. They're non-violent and most attacks are actually bluffs. That being said, gorillas have the strength of eight men and a bite force stronger than that of grizzly bears, so they can easily send you on a first class flight straight to the heaven gates. Do not make eye contact. They take it as a sign of disrespect and you do not want to disrespect a silverback gorilla. Do not show your teeth. They take it as a challenge and an invitation to send your jaw to Jerusalem. Do not thump your chest in front of a silverback gorilla. Actually, if you're dumb enough to do that, you might as well just let natural selection do its thing. Don't scream, raise your arms, or try to make yourself look bigger. He'll put you in your place expeditiously. And by place, I mean the in memoriam section of your local news. The best thing to do is lower yourself and appear as non-threatening as possible. If he approaches you, get on the ground and go completely limp. He might examine you to see if you're a threat, so do not panic. Gorillas don't usually attack anything that seems weaker than they are, which gives them more of a moral compass than high school bullies. That's how you survive a gorilla attack. How to survive a polar bear. First, you want to make yourself look big. Are you serious? Did you really think I was going to have actual advice here? I mean, look at this. If you're ever in a situation where this is in front of you, just know that living is no longer your choice. What's the expression? If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, get on the ground. If it's white, you finna die. This guy literally decides whether you get to go home to your family or go home to your ancestors. They can run at 25 miles per hour. They can swim at 6.2. Not even Michael Phelps could breaststroke his way out of this one. They can smell a seal from several miles away, so if a polar bear pulls up on you, not only did it already know you were there, the slaughter that's about to occur was premeditated. There is one thing you can do. Research says if you're armed with one shot, the best place to aim is right between your own eyes. You thought I was going to say shoot the bear? Nah, you better press the quit button on life before he takes yours. 10 feet long, 1,000 pounds. All a bullet's going to do is make him want to send you to Shangri-La faster. I forgot to mention they have a bite force of 1,235 pounds per square inch. Oh yeah, and the whole playing dead thing doesn't work here. In conclusion, if a polar bear decides it's your time, it's going to put you to rest next to Squidward's hopes and dreams. At least the cubs are cute. Let's survive a chimpanzee attack. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not going to. We're talking about an animal that kills, mutilates, and cannibalizes members of its own species. They're four times stronger than humans, and this one looks like they either came from or is going to prison. You see the triceps? One uppercut and he's sending your jaw to Jerusalem with no return trip. Evolution made humans smart enough to put a man on the moon, but also made chimps small enough to put a man on the news. They're the CEOs of Black Air Force Energy. Let's not forget that this one literally ripped a woman's face off. She literally can never use iPhone Face ID because this chimp decided he didn't like her anymore. Chimps will literally coordinate gang assaults on each other. They'll pin their victim to the ground and tear their throat and balls off. They literally perform non-consensual vasectomies on each other. A chimpanzee in Sweden once hit a pile of rocks under a bunch of hay. When visitors arrived to his enclosure, he got the stones and started yeeting them at people. And this was 100% premeditated. Only advice is to jump in water because chimps can't swim. If you can't find any water, be sure to save me a seat at Heaven's Dining Hall. How to survive a hippo attack. You're not going to. That's the end of the video. Seeing this means you just reached your season finale. I don't like victim blame, but a lot has to go wrong in life for this to be in front of you. I'm talking about a 16 foot long, 3,000 pound bipolar tank with homicidal tendencies and tusks. And look how they treat their own kind. What makes you think they'll go easy on you? 
I think I'm exaggerating. I recently watched a video where an antelope was running away from lions and he jumped into a watering hole. And you want to know what happened next? A hippo pulled up and finished the job with zero regard for his actions. If you're ever this close to a hippo, then my only advice is proporo tiro morir. Built like a Toyota with the personality of Jeffrey Dahmer. Can run at speeds of 20 miles per hour, can torpedo attack through water, and they're basically bulletproof. That is what you're up against. The only piece of advice I have is to run up a hill. That's, that's the best I can do. Actually, I do have another piece of advice. If you're ever a big-time Colombian drug kingpin and you can have any pet in the world, just, just get a dog. Cocaine hippos are something the world doesn't need to deal with. How to survive a cougar attack. First, you want to avoid happy hour applebees. That's when they're most active and at their most dangerous. Now on to the cats. Now to be fair, mountain lion attacks are rare and deaths are even rarer. Your own dog's more likely to turn you into a prayer. With that being said, they have claws, jaws, and my man is cut. We are talking about an animal that has the word lion in its name, and I would be lying if I told you this wasn't capable of turning you into a statistic if it wanted to. At 8 feet long, 220 pounds, and the ability to put a moose out of commission, cougars are not to be taken lightly. Do not run. Running is basically dry snitching on yourself, because by doing that, you're telling the cougar that you're food. Also, humans are an evolutionary failure, because we can't seem to run away from anything. Don't turn your back on a cougar. As ambush predators, they prefer to hit from the b Attack from behind. Stand your ground, speak in a loud, firm voice, and throw sticks and branches if you have to. The cougar will be forced to assume that you're absolutely crazy, and even they know you don't mess with crazy. Cougars are not very persistent. Once they see that you're going to be a challenge, they'll usually give up. Unlike the cougars you'll find here. How to survive a tiger attack. Unless you're a gay hillbilly redneck with a Netflix series, I don't see why you could ever possibly need this. Also, let's be clear, this is a 12-foot, 600-pound carnivore that will send you to your dead relatives if it wants to. Don't run. You know the flash pass that helps you get on Six Flags rides faster? Trying to outrun a tiger is basically a flash pass to the heaven gates. Face the tiger and back away slowly. A man actually survived an encounter with a tiger by doing this. As ambush hunters, if they feel like they've lost an the element of surprise, they might not even bother. Stand up tall. Crouching down only makes you look like prey. Also, don't pee near a tiger. That's how they mark their territory, so if you pee around a tiger, they'll take it as a sign of disrespect, and disrespecting a tiger is pretty bad for your health. Don't antagonize a tiger. This seems like common sense, but I did just see a girl swan dive into the Hudson, so I'm, I'm not assuming anything. Let's be clear, this isn't a cougar. Tigers will defend themselves. A man once tried defending himself against a tiger by hitting it with a stick. The tiger then hit him with a one-way trip to his ancestors. Wear a backwards mask. It'll make the tiger less likely to turn you into a story on the morning news. If all else fails, tell Kobe we miss him. Survive a hyena attack. After extensive research, I came to the conclusion that if you put yourself in a position where this guy decides your fate, you don't deserve to be alive to waste our oxygen supply. We're talking about an animal that will run the pockets of Simba, Mufasa, and whoever they put in a new kid's remake. I know what you're about to say. It takes like 20 hyenas to take down a lion, right? But that's the problem. Gang violence is a problem everywhere, but it reaches its peak here because hyena clans can reach up to 80 members, and every single one will violate you with extreme prejudice. Can't run. I'll chase you down at 37 miles per hour for as long as 15 miles. It's being run down by the Hyena Mafia for the length of 264 football fields. You can't play dead, because pretty soon you won't be able to play alive. And since they're basically sledgehammers with teeth, you'll be lucky if death spares your soul, because they have no ethical dilemmas when it comes to eating their prey alive. That and a hyena could break your ribs with one crucial hit stick. Speaking of stick, they could snap your leg the same way we bite into celery. And since their teeth are covered in rotting flesh, even if you survive, the infection you get will make you wish you hadn't. My only advice is to never put yourself in this position in your life. And if you do, my advice to your relatives is closed casket is your only option. How to survive a bear attack. First, take whatever God you believe in, Jesus, Allah, Tom Brady, because some of y'all do take it that far, and pray that he gives you the strength to not get put on the 9 o'clock news. Do not run away. God took his time with bears. They can outrun, outclimb, and outswim you. Running triggers his predator response, and that's basically signing your death certificate. Slowly back away while speaking in a low but firm voice. Also, avoid eye contact. They don't like that. Do not turn your back on a grizzly bear. That is a great way to get revenanted. Unless your last name DiCaprio, there is no award for getting assaulted by a grizzly. Also, I heard some people say you should make yourself look bigger. See, that might work with black bears, but if a grizzly stands up and is taller than a basketball rim, not only are you going to feel real stupid, you're also going to die. Also, bear spray is more effective than a gun. All using a gun does is make it personal. You do not want to make things personal with a grizzly bear. If a grizzly attacks you, play dead. I mean, if this attacks you, that shouldn't be too hard. Lay face down with your hands behind your neck and try to forgive anybody that may have wronged you in the past. That way, if you do die, you won't die with any hate in your heart. Once the bear decides that you're not a threat and not worth the waste of energy, he'll leave you alone to question every life decision that led you to this point. Make yourself look bigger, my ass. How to survive an elephant. Notice I said elephant and not elephant attack. That's because if an elephant decides it wants to hurt you, there isn't a force in nature that's going to save you. Forget being sent to Jesus. A pissed off elephant will send your soul straight to oblivion. 13,000 pounds with tusks, they won't send you to heaven or hell. They'll just erase you completely like Epstein. Look at the ears. If an elephant approaches you and the ears are relaxed, it's likely a mock charge. If the ears are pinned back, it's going to attack. Also, a relaxed trunk means he doesn't consider you a threat. Yet. A curl trunk means there is malicious intent and he is preparing to end you. Stay downwind. Elephants have poor eyesight but a strong sense of smell. You want to keep something between you and the elephant. A car, a tree, a mailbox, literally anything is better than facing this guy defenseless. If he starts to approach you, throw a decoy object. You might be able to distract him long enough and if that doesn't work, scream. 
Loud noise might fool the elephant into thinking you're a possible threat and he'll leave you alone. However, if you have to resort to this and you survive, make sure you play the lottery because you are a lucky motherfucker. Also, you don't want to turn your back on an elephant. Elephants take this as a sign of fear or submission and they will hunt you down and give you the world's worst facelift.